Hello, my name is Håkon and today I will show you another little trick on the Empress Zoya. Now, the today again it will be about the sequencer. If you're using the sequencer on the Zoya for any purpose, whether it's melodic or to use it for CV values or modifying any other parameters, there may be times when you will want to change how many active steps are going to be played in a specific sequence. You may want to change this on the fly while you're playing or performing uh, for different reasons. So you may, might make a sequence of 16 steps and sometimes you want to play just 12 or 8 or 6 or you might want to just improvise completely and vary it uh, while you're performing. Now there's a very easy way to do this which is also easy to do while performing. And it's easy to see what you're doing and which steps are active. And I'll show that to you now. I'll just um, first play this little patch that I made. This is just a modification of the one from my previous tutorial. I've just added a delay, really. Um, and I'll just go through this patch just quickly. I'll just reduce the volume a little bit. Okay, so. This is also why I like having a, um, a gain output, a gain control on my audio output, so I can tune it down a little bit. Okay, so uh, this patch is, the sound source is an oscillator, which is up here. And the frequency input comes from a melodic sequencer that is down here. That's the CV output there. It goes in here. Uh, the audio output goes to the VCA and the VCA is controlled by an ADSR envelope which is here. The VCA output goes to the audio output left and right but it also goes to um, a delay effect and a reverb effect down here. Um, and that's just for fun and just to make it give the sound a different flavor. It's not necessary for the purpose of this demonstration, but also uh, I like using the oscilloscope effect uh, in my videos and it doesn't really show anything interesting if you have a mono source. So by adding delay and reverb, you create a 3D space for the sound and it creates a more interesting oscilloscope image. So that's why actually. Okay, so uh, the ADSR envelope here and um, of course now the LFO here triggers if you've seen my previous um, tutorial, it shows how to make this rhythmic effect with the sequencer. So I'll just kept this because it makes it sound more interesting now. Um, if you want to, to know how I do that, uh, watch my previous tutorial. The only thing I'm showing today is how to create different number of steps in one melodic sequence. I'll just switch this off now. So. Here we have the main sequence with um, 12 steps right now. And I'll just go into the editor now and edit it so we can see. So um, number of steps 12, number of tracks, and this is where the magic happens, so to speak. It's a very small trick, but it's, it works. So number of tracks needs to go change from one to two. So you have two tracks rather than one, which is the default. Uh, you want restart jack to be on, which is also not a default. So number of tracks, you move that from one to two and restart jack, you go from off to on when you make or modify your sequencer and that will allow this to be done. So, and behavior loop. So. So that's the two main things you need to change in a basic default sequence. Uh, when you add another track to a sequencer, you get two output buttons here. So the first one is the one I'm using for CV now. And the second one uh, is now set to gate. Um, 
If you push down the controller, the uh, encoder button, you get different things. You get ratchet, you get CV, or you get gate. Um, and in this case, you push the button probably once, and you will get a gate output. And uh, it changes color as well to, to green. I'm not sure if that's always the default for the gate outputs. Um, and also, the gate outputs, and this is where the trick is really, is then fed back into this button here, which is the sequencer queue start. That is the control that you added, which allows you to restart the sequencer at any time. It doesn't have to go all the way through to restart. When this is activated with a control voltage of one, it jumps back to the beginning on the next step. And by setting the gate output from the second sequencer in this sequence, on the second sequence in the sequencer, to the restart input, you're actually controlling with the gate when this is going to restart. So I'll just play that again now. And at the moment, there is uh, it's just running the whole sequence, but now we run the gate input. And I can set the gate, for instance, there. And now, it just repeats the first four steps of the sequence. If I move it to the fifth step, like so, it does the first five steps. Or I can do it like down there on the eleventh step. What is the first step? And it just repeats the first step over and over. Second step. So it's a very simple way of doing this. So if you want to change the CV values, you go into the CV one here. And you can see now it's just flashing between these two. And if you want to change the gate values, or, or where the gate is, or rather the where the, um, the sequence ends, so you're setting your end point with the gate sequence. So just a very simple thing to do. So uh, that's, that's really all I'm showing you today. Um, it's something that you may not think about when you go into the sequencer settings, but uh, it's right there and it's quite convenient. And, uh, and because you're using the same sequencer as you use for your melody, it's very easy to visualize what you're doing and where your endpoint is going. You're not controlling it with any other modules. And I think that's a good thing, as the many, the most things you can control from one place uh, and that you can relate it to what you're doing, it makes it easier to play on the fly and uh, it's uh, less likely you get confused, which is something that could happen with the Emperor Zoya because it's such a complex um, little effects processor. So there you have it, you can change the location of the endpoint for your melodic or CV sequence, like so. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed watching that little video and I hope you learned something new. And um, um, so please let me know if you found this interesting or if you're using this in one of your own patches. Um, and also if any of you are using the Zoya in a live performance, this is gonna be a really useful little thing to do if you haven't figured out already that you can do that. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time with more uh, Empress Zoya tutorials and uh, possibly other things too. And uh, goodbye for now. Bye bye.